Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohimu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and committed us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohimu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we enter... <coughs> Excuse me. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohimu, king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> Today's read is a little bit of a long one. Exodus 13, verse 17 through chapter 17, verse 16. And when Pharaoh let the people go, Elohim did not lead them by way of the land, <coughs> by way of the land of Philistines. Although that was near, Elohim said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But Elohim led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Moses took <coughs> the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from with you from here. And they moved on to Sukkot. And encamped at Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And the, pil the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from them before the people. <clears throat> then Yahweh said to Moses, Tell all the people of Israel to turn back and camp in front of Pi Hahiroth, between Migdol and the sea, in front of Baz Baal Zephon. Yeah. You shall encamp facing it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say that of the people of Israel, They are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, <clears throat> and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him. He took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And Yahweh said, And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camped at the sea by Pai Hahirath in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to Yahweh. They said to Moses, It is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. Yahweh will fight for you, and you have only... You have only to be silent. Yahweh said to Moses, Why do you cry to me?
Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots, and his horsemen, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and all his horsemen. Then the angel of Elohim, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the hosts of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and a darkness, and it lit up the night, without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. The waters began the wall <coughs> began being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And all the morning watch Yahweh in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for Yahweh fights for them against the Egyptians. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the seas, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course. When the morning appeared, and all the Egyptians fled into it. Yahweh threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returning and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the hosts of Pharaoh. That had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power of Yah that Yahweh used against the Egyptians, so the people feared Yahweh, and they believed in Yahweh and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to Yahweh, saying, I will sing to Yahweh, for he has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my Yah my Elohim, and I will praise him. My father Elohim, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots in his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Yahweh, glory and power. Your right hand, O Yahweh, shatters the enemy. In the right greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury, it consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters pile up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the sea, in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake. I will divide my spoil, I'll, my desire shall have its fill of them. <clears throat> Sorry. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Yahweh, among gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your hands, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The people have heard, they trembled. Pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now all the chiefs of Edom dismayed, trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as a stone. Till your people, O Yahweh, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Yahweh, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, 
which your hands have established, Yahweh will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, Yahweh brought them, brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to Yahweh, for his triumph gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water when they came to Mara. They could not drink the water of Mara because it was bitter. Therefore it was named Mara. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to Yahweh, and, Yah and Yahweh showed him a log. And he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There Yahweh made for them a statue and a, a statute and a rule. And there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. They set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and, si and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month, after they had departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The people of Israel said to them, What would that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt? When we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the, f to the full, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill us this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you and for the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. And on the sixth day when they prepared what they bring in, it will be as twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was Yahweh who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of Yahweh, because he has heard your grumbling against Yahweh. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When Yahweh gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to, f to the full, because Yahweh has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him. What are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before Yahweh. For he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in a cloud. And Yahweh said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was, and Moses said to them, It is the bread that Yahweh has given you to eat. This is what Yahweh has commanded. Gather it, gather of it, each of you as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer. According to the number of persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. And when they measured it, Within Omar, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let not, 
Let no one leave any of it over till morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till morning, and, uh, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. By morning, morning by morning, they gathered each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omars each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what Yahweh commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, and Moses commanded them, and it did not stink, and there was no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And Yahweh said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, Yahweh has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives gives you bread for two days remaining. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name Manna. It was like coriander seeds, white. The taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what Yahweh has commanded. Let an omar of it be kept through your generations. So that they may see the bread of which I fed you in the wilderness. And when I brought you out of the land of Egypt, and Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar, and put an omar of manna in it, and place it before Yahweh to be kept throughout your generations, as Yahweh commanded Moses. So Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years till they came to the habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And Omar is the tenth part of an ephah. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of Yahweh, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink, therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? But the people thirst there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why do you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to Yahweh, <coughs> What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff which, with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there, on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it. The people of Israel drank, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa in Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested Yahweh by saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of Elohim in my hand. So Joshua did, as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses, <coughs> Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. While Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it on the ears of Joshua, that it will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, Yahweh is my banner, saying, A hand on saying a hand on the throne of Yahweh. Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. <clears throat> Man, throat.
Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, king of the universe. She gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in her midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah of Brukata, Adonai Elohim, Malak, Alom. As a Natal and Utredi met Baishie, Alom, Natal Bete, can you Brukata, Adonai, Natina, Tara? Come on.